All right, today I want to talk about retrieval augmented generation, which is how Scriv.ai works under the hood. So this diagram shows the basic process. So you start over here on the left with a question, how do I do X? So that question will go to your knowledge base, which will retrieve a set of documents that are relevant to that question. Those documents and the original question then go to your large language model uh, in the generation process. And the large language model will essentially read those documents, read the question, and then try to answer it to the best of its abilities and respond back to the user. So it's pretty simple. Uh, most of the complexity is hidden in this retrieval process here. Um, but today I want to talk about generation and how this bit works with the LLM and also how you can get it to site sources, which is something that I did yesterday and it's pretty cool. So let's dive into a script for how this works. So this is an example conversation that I had with Scriv where I'm asking it a question about my product SAS Pegasus and it is uh, providing a custom answer. So the user input is what our teams and from here you can see what's happening in this LLM stage here. So the system prompt, which is kind of the main prompt that you give to the LLM, just kind of says your Pegasus bot, and, and then it explains what's gonna happen. So it says you're gonna be given the extracted parts of a knowledge base labeled with documents and a question. Answer the question using the information from the knowledge base. Uh, and then I add this bit so that um, if the answer is not available, you can still try to answer the question because these LLMs still have lots of, uh, they can still answer a lot of general questions. So try to say something useful even if it's not there, but, but make sure that you use your general knowledge and not the sources. So that's the system prompt. Then we have the sources prompt. So this is basically this line here where the document snippets get put into the LLM. And this is the actual text. Everything from this cursor down is the actual text that goes to the LLM. So it says begin documents. This kind of tells the LLM, okay, here's the documents, begin documents. So now this is a single document. Each document has content, um, and this is the snippet that got pulled out, and then also has this little source section, which has a source ID, and that'll be relevant later for source citations. Then the document ends, we begin another one, more content, more sources, and you can see like this first document is a very good answer to uh, my question, which was what are teams? Um, so this is, uh, an overview of using Teams. These other ones are coming from the Slack history, uh, and you know they have some keyword matches here, Teams, but they're not they're not very good answers. Um, here's another one. Uh, again, so you can see kind of the keyword Teams are being used quite a lot in this message, but it's not really telling you what Teams are, um, et cetera, et cetera. So we feed all that to the LLM. Uh, as documentation, and the LLM will then provide an answer, uh, which is coming from this first document, 26622. And so not only has it uh, answered the question, it's also sort of said, yeah, these other documents weren't very relevant, I just answered using this one particular document. So that is pretty cool. You can also see the LLM responded in JSON. Um, this is OpenAI, and now I want to show how that works. So let's go to the code, and yeah, you can see this is where it's printing out this stuff. And the key to this, so you can see here, this is how the prompt gets created. And if you're not familiar with the OpenAI API, basically you just pass it a bunch of messages, and each, so it's just like ChatGPT, except that each message can either be a system message or an AI message or a user message. And the system messages are useful to um, tell the AI, hey, this is, this is something that you should know, but it's not something that the user said. So that prompt, that system prompt, which is the, you know, you are Pegasus GPT answer based on blah, blah, blah. That, that is the first message that goes to the system. The second one is the sources. So that's, uh, all this stuff. And then the last one is the user message, which is just that one query, what are teams. Um, <clears throat> the key 
to the source citations is passing in a function. So OpenAI functions are a relatively new tool that will allow you to get the AI to respond in structured JSON output. So here I'm saying use the get sources function, uh, which I will show you now. So this get sources is a JSON structure where you define uh, information about the function, so a name and a description, as well as the parameters that uh, the function has. So in this case, we want the function to have an answer, which is going to be the answer to the user's question. That's a string. And then we also want the function to have a list of sources, which is going to be an array of numbers, which represent the IDs of the sources that were used in generating the answer. Oh, and I say that they are both required, uh, required, which means every response should include an answer and a sources. And so now when I make the OpenAI function call here, it will return this arguments thing, which inside will have the answer and the sources. And then I can just extract those an the answer and those sources and show them in the UI, which is here. So yeah, I mean, it, it kind of seems like magic, uh, but it's pretty straightforward once you understand how it works. You're basically still just giving the AI a whole bunch of text, giving it a little bit of structure so that it can cite its sources and um, know how to answer, know that its job is to answer the question. And that is basically it. So like I said, most of the interesting stuff is in this retrieval space. How do you turn how do I do X and a knowledge base into a relevant list of documents? You can see, uh, you could see from the example that it doesn't always do such a great job. Uh, and that is a very interesting technical problem that I will talk about more in future streams. So I hope that was useful. That is the generation part of retrieval augmented generation. I'll see you next time.